Hey guys, I've had a few people ask me to do a build along on a, uh, a bow. So, me and a friend are each going to make a bow today. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm shaking the camera a bit. I actually don't have a tripod. And I'm hoping this is in focus. Now, if you see the curve of the grain on this piece of wood, the side toward my index finger here is the back of the bow. When you buy boards to make bows, you have to buy plain sawn boards. You can't use quarter sawn. Uh, you want the grain to run clean across left to right uh, from a cross section view of your bow. So right now we're using uh, one by three, which is really three quarter by two and a half, red oak air dried boards, not kiln dried. So I'm gonna show you some of my layout. I'm going to try something new today. It's called a Hamaguard bow. Let's go to the handle. Here is the primary tool that we'll be using. This is a four-way rasp. It's a single and double bastard cut, depending on which side, and coarse and rough wood rasp. This one cuts only one direction. This cuts in both directions. This is the tool that we'll be using the most. Uh, the bow that he's making see how his layout is. It's pretty much a stick bow. It's 5 eighths inch at the top by 3 quarter, 1 and a quarter at the middle, and there's going to be some carving in the sides and in the uh, belly. It's going to have some pretty interesting knocks. So, you go ahead and cut this video. I'm going to get the draw knife from him and rough out my bow, and I'll start it up again. Alright, build along part two. I'm working on the tips of the Hamagard bow, and I lay my rasp on the bow, and it's kind of hard to see, but right here there's a dip. So what I do is I take my pencil, not sure if my camera can focus this close, but I take my pencil and I draw a bunch of lines where the dip is. Lines go straight across. And then I'll put a big X on it so I know not to take wood off of there. Then I keep rasping on both sides of the dip, and the goal is eventually to lay my rasp down and have it very straight. This is also going to be a uh, 45, I'm sorry, a 42 degree uh, fade. It's not going to be round. It's going to be a straight angled fade, which I've never done before. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, now what I'm going to do, I have the end fairly shaped. It's rough, but there's a, little, a lot of shaping left to do. I'm going to glue the second piece of wood so that the bottom is even with the fade. And this piece is a little bit, little bit thinner than the actual tip. The tip still has to come in about a sixteenth on each side, uh, but this is going to all be rounded off in the end, and the knock is going to be right up here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this up, clamp it, and next video will be after it's unclamped, ready to shape. Okay, I forgot to take a video when I was doing a little shaping. It's glued up now. A couple hours I'll be able to work it better. But cut a little angle at the end to the taper here. I'm going to work these two pieces into each other eventually. But that's what we got so far. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with this fade. So, this might not end up being a Hamagard bow, but again, this is my first attempt at a bow that has this, this unusual type of tiller. So, we'll see where it goes. Alright, here's one end after the glue has set, and I have not taken a rasp and sandpaper to this end. I'm going to flip the bow over. Here's the end that the rasp and sandpaper have already gone to. Uh, I've rasped it into a fairly pyramid-shaped cross-section. And I haven't done anything about the glue down here or the fades. Fades are still really rough. This needs to be smoothed out a lot. But this is what the tip is going to look like. It's going to have... Uh, originally I planned to do a bone knock, but actually got some... Uh, deer uh, toe bones yesterday, and I think they're going to make really good knocks. 
So, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, I hope the wind doesn't mess with the camera too bad, but uh, I have some deer toes off uh, freshly hunted deer. And these are, after I match them up, I have to find two that have about the same bend. These are going to be my arrow knocks. So, just an update. I'm going to skip some of the carnage at taking apart the deer parts, but I do want to set the camera down. And show I have this floor tillered now. I have an easy four inches of bend on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and get these knots on, put a long string, and start the tiller process. Okay, I'm done with the knocks. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use these. Uh, this particular, let's see if we can flex it. This particular toenail from the deer was a little thinner than I would like. This one's okay. It's it's quite a bit stiffer. I can squeeze a good bit of pressure and nothing happens. So we'll see if I can get these put on. And if not, I'll just cut some knocks in the bow and move on. Well, I broke one of my antler knocks, or sorry, the deer toe knocks. So I'm just going to carve some knocks into this. I pointed the end, make it a little easier and have a little 45 degree knock cut in. So we'll start tillering. Kind of sucks after all that work that it broke. Alright guys, I have this very low on the tillering stick. Uh, I also lost my tillering stick so I took one that was going to be a uh, bow drill set for some kids, but I have this on the tilling stick and there is a little bit of a problem here. Um, oh, also, if anyone notices the scorched end, notice the, uh, the belly is not scorched at all, and only the non-working part of a bow can be scorched. And really, this is kind of bordering a no-no even for the non-working parts. But I just take a little pen lighter and, and caramelize the sugars on top, basically. And there is absolutely no scorching on the belly of the bow. There's no scorching on the working part of the back of the bow either. So, I just want to put that disclaimer out there in case anyone sees a little bit of scorch mark on the bow and gets the wrong idea. One problem that I'm having is typically with a board stage, you want your grain to go from one tip to the other straight up the bow. But volume two of the traditional Bowers Bible shows that the Homagard bows did not have what we would typically consider uh, straight running grain. They had a lot of feathering points on them, and I've tried to duplicate that here, and that might be the death of this bow. So, we will see. I'm going to work the limbs a little more. I'm going to Tighten the long string to true brace height of about four and a half, five inches, and see what happens. Now, this will be the last video on my Homagard bow. There's the handle, pyramid limbs out to about here. And again, this is a non working section of limb. Now, unfortunately, I really hate to do this with my bows, but I had to use B50 for the bow string. Artificial sinew just wouldn't cut it on this bow because of the extra stretch. Uh, right now, the limbs are exercised but not worked in. The bow is pulling 62 pounds at 26 and a half inches, something like that. I want to gain about one inch of draw to get a 27 and a half inch draw on this bow. But that's going to come after shooting it quite a bit. So right now, the bow is strung for the first time. I'm going to take my first three shots and see how it works. By the way, the limbs have been exercised. There have been 50 pulls to 24 inches slowly. And I'm only pulling this bow to 24 inches. This is not full draw.
Okay, and I'm gonna do one more round of three. Just get a feel for the bow a little bit. I'm gonna pull it back just a little more this time. And one more, last set. Well, got a little bit of working in for the limbs. It'll pick up about one inch of draw, and the cast will actually improve after it's broken in. Not by much, just a little bit with the self bow. But here it is, my finished Tomaguard bow.